Hey everybody, it's Callfire Man here, and today I am bringing you a video detailing the map Overgrowth. Now, Overgrowth in Battleborn is the most played incursion map. Um, it's not my favorite incursion map, but uh, and part of that stems from the fact that it's the most played Overgrowth or incursion map. And um, my favorite one's probably got to be Echelon. However, uh, that's not the video we're going over today. Today we're going over Overgrowth. But if you look at the picture on the screen right now it's just an overview of all the different things there from the sentry turrets shock turrets shards sentry bots health stations thumpers accelerators um, minion bots or elite minion stations um, as well as the different thrall spawns but the one or the things that I wanted to show you today were first uh, making the initial push and the different ways that you want to make your initial push. Um, so if you look at this picture here, um, there's three different lines running through it. And these three different lines are basically the only three ways you want to push out uh, of the initial spawn on overgrowth. Uh, now, the light blue line, that is the main push out of your initial spawn. You want three, if not four, of your characters running out this way. Um, and just so you know, if you're actually playing this in-game, there's going to be arrows pointing out the door that has the light pink line coming from it. Uh, so you want most of your team going out of the exit that is opposite the side of the arrows. And uh, I see this all the time, but people go out the main door, never go out the main door. That is just a complete waste of time. You're wasting your team's time. It's just a bad thing to do. Um, so don't go out that main door. You have to go out one of the side ones. Um, and technically speaking, you only want one person going uh, on the route that has the light pink line and that's the one that has the arrows like I said it has arrows on it in game you only want one person doing that um, but anyways the reason why you want almost everyone going out the the light blue line and following that route is because it's the quickest way out to the center of the map um, as a short aside the only reason you want to ever take that light yellow route is uh, to get more shards and it's kind of a flank route uh, it's not a terribly great flank route and if you get caught there and the rest of your team doesn't push up uh, along the light blue route then you're screwed you're gonna die for sure so you have to be smart when you do that and you only want to do that if you've got a team with you otherwise you're for sure going to die um, if the other team pushes out and you're just left there all alone because your only way out is through the center of the map so you have to have most of your people going out through that light blue map or that light blue route and another thing too and this is kind of the reason why the light blue route is the main one is because there's a lot of shards there that's actually where you get most shards from the uh, spawn on overgrowth uh, one mistake that I see almost everyone make that I want to clear up here is a lot of people will try and share shards don't ever on your life share a single shard if you get there first take every single shard every single time I don't care how many times people complain to you in chat and say oh you're so greedy why are you taking all the shards those people are idiots okay that's just the way it is you have to take every single shard all the time there's two reasons for it first a um, hundred shards like if you only get one of those big shards along the way and you get a hundred shards you can't do anything with it so you just completely wasted the shards um, whereas if you have someone collect all the shards and they've got a shard generator a zero cost shard generator at the beginning they can get something like a, a 420 cost item um, generally speaking that's the way I like to do it otherwise a lot of people will get that first shock turret uh, once they get all those shards but if you share the shards you can't do that um, as an aside, I know that everyone thinks taking that first shock turret is the way to do it competitively, and a lot of the reason that people do it is because, uh, at least on the Xbox community, there is one team that has been known as the best Xbox team for over a year, um, and that's the way they do it. I personally think it's a very stupid move um, to take that first shock turret simply because you can bait the other team to take it, and you can get an easy stun on one of the guys going for that shock turret, uh, as well as the fact that you can just take that shock turret down immediately, and so they just waste their shards. So, personally speaking, I don't take that shock turret. I'm not going to say it's a bad idea. It is a good way to start the game out, um, and if you want to do it, you have to follow that blue route, but 
remember never share any shard ever and the second reason why you never share any shards and this isn't as evident in overgrowth because uh, basically everyone's running the same way except that one person you have going on that light pink route but um, if you're playing a game like Mo on, on a map like monuments uh, this becomes really evident if you have someone right behind you uh, trying to get those shards they're just wasting their time and uh, they could be going a different faster way on monuments the fastest way out to, out to the battle you don't get any shards um, or you get very few shards anyways but uh, so on a map like monuments if you have if you're used to sharing shards or anyone is on your team that's used to sharing shards they'll follow you where those shards are and then they just completely give up map control so you're if you already, or if you're the type of person who tries to share shards or tries to pressure your team into sharing shards, I'm just going to say this flat out: you're an idiot and you need to stop. <laughs> That's just the truth. Uh, you should never share a single shard on your life. And if you're ever following right behind someone in the hopes of getting a shard, you're an idiot <laughs> and you need to stop. And that's not to say that I never do it. Sometimes I just catch myself running in that direction just because I'm not paying any attention. Like I go basically brain dead for a second. So it happens. I get it. But just realize that you're being an idiot and the person in front of you taking all the shards that's what they're supposed to do you should never share a shard ever in your life that's a terrible way to play the game um, so now that that's out of the way uh, uh, when you start out this initial push you want four people going out the exit that has the light blue and yellow light yellow uh, route and that light yellow route um, that's a flanking route you'll get stuck there like I said if you're on your own and the rest of your team doesn't use the light blue route so you only want one person going that way the rest of them you want going the light blue way because it's the quickest way out there and then the light pink route you only want one person going that way and the only reason they're going that way is to get the shards and you want it to be the person who has the least damage per second and the least uh, chance of getting a kill at the start. So if you have like a Reyna or a healer, that's generally a good place for your healer to go uh, because they don't become really all that useful until the fight's already started anyways. So anyways, that's the way you want to do that initial push. Just remember, never share shards ever and you want uh, three to four people doing that light blue route, the light yellow route, maybe have one person do it, but you can only do that if the rest of your team is going uh, up that light blue route and then one person does that light pink route and only one person. Um, so next we're going to look at uh, sort of map control on this on the map of overgrowth and uh, I'm actually going to talk through this going from the bottom up on this so we're going to talk about the uh, uh, the green oval first which I have labeled as the century final stand area and we're assuming that you spawn in at the bottom base just like as in the um, other example and I'm going to walk you through how you make a push from your side on the sentry final stand area and you're going to push up towards the enemy sentry and take an offensive position so let's say for whatever reason maybe you, your team was just wiped but you're playing very defensive um, they've got you pushed real back and they've got minions coming in towards your sentry so it looks like your sentry is going to take damage or maybe your sentry already is taking damage uh, one good place to uh, take people out from in this scenario is the green oval area I call it the century final stand area the reason I call it the final stand area is because if you're playing here you're usually in a lot of trouble um, it's a good place because you can peek out over that little opening into where your sentry turret is and you can keep yourself from taking damage from the enemy team uh, while you protect the lane so it's a good place to clear out the enemy minions so let's say you've got your whole team in this sort of final stand area, the green oval area, and you wipe those minions. What you need to do then is after the minions are wiped, you need to get out into the blue oval area, that sentry defense area. So let's say you have four people move up there and you keep one person over at that sentry final stand area. Maybe you've got a sniper who can sort of see down the lane and he's just sniping down through there. So now that you're at the blue oval, the sentry defense area, you can protect this area. You've got a lot of defense from the enemies who are in the center. They've got map control in the center there. Um, if they push out too far and try and move towards your sentry, your sentry is going to hit them, your thumper is going to hit them, and if you can stun them, it's real easy to kill them there. Um, so anyways, once you get set up right here and you're holding that area pretty well, you're going to want to have one person go up to the uh, window poke that's the white area up there uh, generally speaking you want a ranged person to go up there so let's say you have a sniper have them go up there because they can rain down damage anywhere in that center area and uh, it's just a real good vantage point and then let's have another person to uh, move up actually 
once you're once you have four people in the sentry defense area and one in the window poke, you need to sort of get the enemy team a little bit on the defensive. If they're still holding down the center real well, you're not really going to be able to make a push. But if you have them sort of backing up, maybe one of the enemies have teleported back to base or something, then you'll send one person over to the yellow area. I call it the shock turret poke. Uh, and from the shock turret poke, you can't really do a whole lot. You can do damage to the enemy team, but if you get pushed out too far, you're going to get yourself killed. So you just want to poke people from over here. Um, if the enemy team doesn't do anything about you over here, uh, then you're going to be able to put in a bunch of damage, and then the rest of, team, of your team is going to be able to follow up. If they do push after you, you just retreat and make them follow you back and uh, get out of position so that the rest of your team can move up. So let's say the person on Shock Turret poke gets followed by two people and he backs up he retreats that allows your people in the blue oval the sentry defense area to move up to the purple area which I call the shock turret assault once you're at the shock turret assault area you need to take that shock turret out immediately it should have been taken out already by the person in the window poke again uh, I've said this in other videos but you need to take that shock turret out immediately that's your first priority whenever you can do it uh, you're just going to take a huge amount of damage from that especially if they've leveled up to level two because then it'll hit multiple enemies or multiple of your allies at once if it's an enemy shock turret. But uh, anyways, once you're at the shock turret assault area, it's basically a big battle just to try and clear out the enemy right there. So let's say you get a kill or something, or um, because you had two people on the enemy team who uh, were pushing your guy on shock turret on your shock turret poke area, that yellow oval. Maybe you close in on them. You're able to kill one, make the other one retreat. Then uh, after you make them retreat, that guy who's on the window poke, generally speaking, like he can stay there, but generally speaking, you want him to move up and try and take over the uh, red area. I call that the sentry ass assault area. And you'll want your people in the purple area to move forward and use that orange area that is the shock turret defense. If you have your team set up to where most of your people on, are in the orange and red area, that's a very good offensive position. The enemy team really can't push at you at all, and uh, if they do, it's very easy to just retreat and let your shock tur turret do work or the people from the other area come help you out. Um, that's really where you want to be at for an offensive position. Uh, you want most of your people in sort of the orange area, the shock turret defense area, and uh, maybe only one person up in the window and one or two people on the red area in the lane pushing forward to assault the sentry. Uh, that orange area is really when you're out playing on offense, that's where you want all your healing and stuff because it's a very easily defendable area. So you'll push forward to the sentry assault area, do a bit of damage, take some uh, damage yourself, then back up to the orange shock turret defense area, heal yourself up, and then get right back into the battle. But that's how you do it offensively. Um, Anyways, that's all I have for this video right now. Let me know in the comments below if you liked this sort of, um, I guess you'd call it a tactical map view. Um, I haven't really seen any other videos on YouTube that cover this sort of thing, but uh, it took me a little bit of work just to do, um, not that it was, you know, like a huge amount of work or anything, but I don't want to make another one unless you guys find this useful. And again, if you want to play competitive competitively you might want to re-watch this and uh, you don't necessarily have to hear my commentary twice because uh, once you understand what I was saying about each one of these areas and when you use them and what they're used for uh, it becomes kind of self-evident but each one of these ovals that I have colored on the map uh, they each have a specific function that or a specific task you have to complete before you move up to the next one so you really need to understand that when you're playing you don't just run forward all helter skelter just like I get to do whatever I want. You have to accomplish the task before you move forward, and then you move forward in an organized fashion. But again, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below, and I can try and do this for each one of the maps.